Ahoy, and welcome to uh, Orc and Hats, uh, modded Minecraft uh, Let's Play. Uh, today is the third episode, and uh, we're going to be trying to set some things up with Psy. Uh, as I mentioned before, Psy is going to let us not need to place down furnaces anymore, which uh, gets us uh, one step closer to our goal of complete independence. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to lay out, out a few things first, uh, but uh, I think we can get right into it. Uh, so let's begin. Okay, so, uh, if, if you're not aware, Psy is a mod that adds basically uh, spell guns. Uh, I believe it's uh, based off a series of video games that I haven't played. But uh, these spell guns uh, basically cast magic spells. And you can select uh, your magic spells like this uh, by pressing the C key. Uh, if you press C key when not on a gun, you uh, show various tutorials. Uh, they're actually quite useful tutorials. Now, uh, the spell guns uh, fire programmable spells. You... Uh, you know, set them up like this. You can uh, add little symbols, connect them together. Uh, it's actually pretty, uh, it's pretty thorough, uh, at times complex. Uh, now, for starting the mod, uh, technically you only need a bit of iron, but uh, I do recommend actually probably having a stack of iron, uh, a stack of gold, and a stack of redstone if it's your first time, as well as maybe, you know, 10, di 10 diamonds or so. But, uh, the mod itself, uh, first thing you want to do is make a CAD assembly. Uh, you can make the uh, base one pretty simple. Uh, pretty simply, you uh, put the four iron together, and then you're going to need a uh, CAD assembler, which basically lets you take the gun pieces and put them together and load them up with spell bolts. But we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so the CAD assembler uh, does need a piston, which I had to go to shore uh, for a bit to get some cobblestone to make. But uh, it's not too hard to do. So you get your CAD assembler, you load up your CAD assembly, and you put it in here. And then you can take your cat assembler, your finished gun, out from here. Uh, now, once you have your finished gun, you want to make sure no spells equipped, which you shouldn't be uh, if it's just starting out for the first time. And uh, you should be able to... Let me see if I have any redstone left. Uh, here we go. You're going to want to aim your gun at some redstone you throw on the ground. That changes it into magical side dust, which you use as a component. Now, the side dust, uh, among other things, you can use it with... Uh, iron to make spell bolts, which is going to hold all your spells outside of, you know, the one that makes uh, the magic side dust. Now, um, what you're probably going to want to do is uh, go through all the tutorials with the C key. Uh, they are uh, quite useful. They tell you a lot of what you need to know. Now, uh, I'll probably post a, uh, I guess, sort of a uh, copy and paste guide of what you can do to get through these quickly. Uh, the faster you finish the tutorials, the... Uh, sooner you, uh, I guess, upgrade your spell level, and the more, uh, I suppose, it's mana points that you get at the end. Uh, the mana points let you cast spells. However, having a better gun lets you cast spells more efficiently, and thus lets you cast a lot more powerful things. Uh, so you want to upgrade your gun in time. Now, there's a few different uh, things you do with your gun, the different pieces that add uh, different uh, amounts, uh, complexity, bandwidth, uh, and overflow. Now, you can also add color with these right here. Now, uh, bandwidth right here, among other things, uh, I believe is the width of the spell in here. You see how uh, this is uh, four wide. This is actually someone else's spell that I was taking a look at. Uh, so I think you need a bandwidth of four. Yeah, here we go. Bandwidth of four. Projection is the amount of tricks. Uh, this is the side cost on casting, the potency of the spell and complexity number of actions. So, going through, this is the max complexity. So as you go, you're gonna need more and more complex things. Now, one thing I mentioned before, it was actually pretty great for us, is uh, we got some glowstone. Uh, and this glowstone let us basically do some of the more advanced uh, cores and whatnot without having to go to that. But you might notice these uh, side metal ingots and the side gems. How do you get those? Well, you will need at least a somewhat advanced uh, side gun first. You'll probably have to make something out of the gold assembly or iron cat assembly with then uh, various cat cores attached. Uh, which, And then you're going to want to add some tricks. This is going to be your first spells, basically. Uh, let me get rid of this. You can uh, press and delete to get rid of the various components. And also, notice here you can export to clipboard and import from clipboard. Uh, these various connectors. But the first, probably, first one you want to do is infusion. It's right there. It'll probably be one of the first ones you get in the tutorial. And if you have a check mark, that means that this thing compiles uh, successfully. 
and you can load it up onto a bullet. Take a bullet right here, and you can right click on it, and then you have, uh, uh, I've still named it pull items. That is very sloppy of me. I should probably name this Infusion. Now, I already have Infusion loaded up on here, but with the standard spell, which we could have just picked up from there, uh, we load the bullets into here. We would just click and drag into here, but I already have the spell. So I take my gun out, I sit on Infusion. Then what I'm gonna do is toss a piece of gold on the ground. I then shoot it, like with the redstone, and then I've got a side metal ingot. Now, Greater Infusion works the same way. Um, you might notice that these are searchable. You can swap it out right there. Load it up onto the bullet, set it up on the gun, uh, and uh, this one works with diamonds instead. So I'm gonna toss the diamond out. I'm running a little low on these. And I was on infusion as opposed to greater infusion, so it did nothing. So here we go, let's try again. And it made it into a shiny side jam. Now these are used for various different craftings, but today we are talking about making, uh, s smelting some things. So, with that in mind, we are going to want to add our first real trick. We have a few different things for smelting. Uh, smelt block, smelt item, and select your nearby smeltable. So, smelt item. We're going to want to smelt actual items as opposed to uh, making sand and glass or whatever. So, it's going to need a target. So, for that, we're going to do a little bit complicated, but selector, nearby smeltables, and we're going to need a random one of those nearby. So, random entity. So, target is going to be the random entity. The random entity is going to be one of the nearby smeltables. The nearby smeltables, uh, let's say a radius of five. So there's the number five. And then up here, we're going to want a position. Well, let's do an entity position. Uh, entity motion, entity position. And which entity position? Well, probably the simplest one for right now is going to be the caster. Selector caster. So uh, you could do a uh, selector caster if you want to cast a spell on yourself or your position or things like that. However, we aren't going to be smelting ourselves. So uh, let's name this smelt once. And it looks like it compiles correctly. And let me actually, uh, I was doing some experimenting earlier. Uh, let's actually take this bullet right here. Get rid of this. We can deal with that later. So smelt once. Got to load up on my gun, take my gun out. Now we need something to smelt our thing. Let's actually select a few of these. So, put down right here. I'm out of range. The range was only, uh, oh, I was doing infusion. That was the problem. So let's try smelt once and see if I'm actually in the range. Here we go, pop, and it is done. So, we have that done. However, uh, there's something I'm curious about. So, I don't believe iron stacks itself, and it only, and that's another problem. Uh, Tech Reborn adds a recipe to smelt iron to refined iron, which for our purposes is, at the moment, quite useless. Uh, we need some iron chests and then a bunch of Tech Reborn stuff. So not anything that we want to actually do. So that is unfortunate for now. Um, now we can do some fancy things. Uh, I don't know if you notice, I just took a bullet out. There are different types of bullets. We were just doing the standard bullet, which basically casts a spell on yourself. There's also the projectile spell bullet, which I believe I had right here. Yes, projectile. So let's get rid of our smelt once and put this one in. Now this one, instead of caster, projectile spell bolts cast a spell on the location, so caster is no longer really as useful. Instead we want focal. Selector focal point. So this basically takes the uh, target location and smelts something within five of that uh, at random. So we have uh, where is the gun? Here we go. So, we've got our gun with uh, that spell. I wrote it out beforehand, but smelt once with the projectile bullet. Um, we need to grab more smeltables. Uh, 
Now, in theory, this should fire out at a pretty great range. So let's just shoot from back here. And here we go. Range smelt. I don't know why we'd want this, but we have it now. Uh, in theory, the standard spells are limited to a range of 32 blocks. Uh, the projectile spells are limited to a range of 32 blocks from, well, where the bullet hits. So let's uh, actually see how crazy we can get with uh, some, uh, well, let's just call it smelt sniping. Let's uh, walk up here backwards, and I think... And there we go. We smelted someone from all the way back here. Uh, could be useful. Uh, I'm going to keep in mind for a potential later thing. Now, uh, that's only smelting one thing at a time, and you might notice it's using up a bit of our mana. Uh, unfortunately, mana can also run out. But there are other spell uh, bullet options. There is the loop cast spell bullet. Not too hard to make. And that basically casts the same cell repeatedly until you move uh, off of the gun. Now this does have some flaws, uh, as I'm going to show in a moment. So I think I do have... Yes, I already did a loop cast. I basically did the same setup um, with the focal point. Focal point actually uh, works still on a self-only spell. Uh, so you can, uh, I guess if you're being lazy, just keep that up. So let's swap this out for... Well, uh, smelt repeatedly. Okay, yeah. I, I'm going to show that one later. So I got smelt repeatedly here. This is going to cast uh, the smelt multiple times. So let me get multiple things to smelt. Let's smelt a bunch of lead. Now remember, this is the more limited range one. It's smelting things near us. Oh, I did smelt once. Uh, yeah, let's see. Smelt repeatedly. You see how it's making a little spell and popping things up? There we go. Now here's the problem with this. It's going to do damage. And I almost just died. Uh, smelting. That could have been bad. Fortunately, we've got our bed set up somewhere over there. So I could have run back. But that is a really risky spell. Uh, especially if you're doing that to like attack enemies or something in combat. You might just kill yourself with it. Which we, we don't want to support here. Uh, but there's a different type of s spell thing. Uh, spell Circle. Which sets... Up a little circle, uh, and then I think we can move away from the circle, so we don't have to, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter if we're that, there or not. Uh, and it only casts it 20 times. And so there's going to be a limit, and hopefully this will keep us from dying. So let's swap out for the spell circle instead. Oh, let's uh, eat, since we got hurt pretty badly there. Have some of our stol stolen uh, cooked salmon. And, uh, all right, so... Uh, same spell right up, uh, but it's going to be using a different bullet. So let's get rid of Smelt Repeatedly. And add in, well, Smelt Repeatedly. I'm horrible at, uh, you know, naming things in a way that's not confusing. Alright, uh, I still need more food. Let's munch on that a little bit. So we've got some lead. Let's see what else we can smelt. Um, let's smelt some Osmium. Let's just throw all the osmium on the ground. 25 osmium. Let's see how good this is. So, this should be a circle. So we can move away. And it used our mana once. And then it's popping out a bunch. It didn't get all the osmium, but... Got 21 osmium. Uh, or I think it might have been 20, because it's 25 total, in a single cast. That's actually pretty amazing. Um, that is way faster than our iron furnace. Uh, so let's... Let's see what we can do, though, because we can't use this on iron, and iron's probably the thing we're going to want to smelt the most. So I would like to make a spell that smelts iron and then only smelts it once. Now, I'm not sure we can do that with random uh, positions and whatnot, but I think there's a way we can move things out of the smeltable range. So let me see what I can set up for us. All right, uh, back for a bit. I've been uh, tinkering with some things. Uh, it looks like I can uh, shoot items towards me with uh, vector subtract and entity add motion. Uh, basically, you have the first vector be uh, the player's position, and the s second vector, the B, the subtracting one, uh, being the entity position. Uh, I've got a setup here that, in theory, should smelt and shoot things towards me. Um, Things are not quite working as I hoped, though. 
as it smelt something and then shoots the rest towards me. Uh, do do more research to try to figure out if there's a way I can do it one at a time, but it does seem to does seem to be not uh, delaying at all, and then the smelted item does not get uh, any movement attached to it. But I'm going to do more tinkering and see what I can find. Alright, I think I actually figured out a solution. It was actually something we had already, in a way. Um, unfortunately, I ran out of iron to test it on, so we're going to have to uh, perhaps do some more money to uh, be thorough about this. But, I can actually just cast a simple spell myself, down at the bottom. And then, in theory, I should be... Uh, right there to pick up every item after it gets uh, smelted, and I should be able to smelt iron before it gets uh, smelted again. And it does require us being a little bit more careful with iron, but I think we might be alright with, uh, well, at least with uh, s smelting so far. So uh, how about we try to figure out a few other tricks we can do that might be used. Alright, I did actually uh, think of it when I was organizing things. We should probably, actually, one thing that would be quite simple at this point, uh, at least after this last spell that we made, is to set up a spell that lets us break blocks. I think we should be able to... Oh, we already... Yep, of course we deleted stuff. So, we are going to do a break block using the same sort of logic as before. Uh, but that should give us basically a uh, ranged pickaxe, which could be quite nice. Um, let's see, break block. Let's just do one for now. Break block. Position. Uh, vector ray cast, I think. Uh, let's do ray. There we go. Vector ray cast. Uh, for what I remember, vector ray cast is also used in uh, computer games and whatnot for, you know, seeing if the bullet hits and things like that. Uh, or laser gun or whatever it is. Uh, so basically we're shooting a little laser and seeing where we hit. Alright, so uh, the... Ray is going to be Entity Look. Entity Look. Let's go there. And the Position is going to be Entity Position. Position Target Caster. And I don't know if we actually want to do max, uh, but this should let us break a block within 32 meters. Uh, and we don't want to do loop cast on this, so we're going to do uh, normal. Uh, yeah, we don't need this smelt wheelie thing, I don't think. So let's use that one. Break block, load up our CAD gun. So we've got break block, smelt once, and smelt repeatedly. So, um, I guess we can uh, try this out. There we go. Um, and there. And wow, that is an impressive amount of range. Uh, yeah, I think we can uh, potentially do a lot with this. Let's get rid of the evidence of our sabotage. I know the pirates care. And uh, pack things up and get going. Um, smell repeatedly wasn't a good option. Let's get rid of that. That thing is deadly. We failed to get rid of that. Deadly. Uh, we don't need bad swords. Okay. Uh, let me gather stuff up. I will keep this for now. I imagine occasionally we'll get tired of uh, jumping through hoops with iron and we might actually smelt iron conventionally. You know, I should have put those in the crate, but I can put them in, well, not there. I don't think they're going to fit in the flower pouch. Uh, but I can put them in my actual pouch. All right, so we have range smelting. I think the next thing we are looking for is going to be flowers. Now, Britannia, we need, I don't know if I was how clear I was before, but we need mana generation to make the magic Britannia metal that we need to make a magical crafting table. Uh, so for that, there's two easy ways to start. The 
Hydrogenous, uh, which require blue and cyan, we need blue. Uh, or the exoflames. Oh, the endoflame, my mistake. Which requires brown, light gray, or red. Let's see. Uh, and again, wrong one. No brown. We do have light gray, and we do have red. So either brown or blue, and we can get started. We need white to make different uh, tools and whatnot for Britannia. But we've got a pretty good setup right there. Okay, um, so I think we are ready to head out. I'm going to uh, swim to shore and see if I can find any magic flowers or anything else that jumps out. All right, uh, see everyone soon. Actually, let's do that again. I'm still a little bit new to this whole uh, showing other people what I'm doing. Uh, so I just jumped off a plank without showing anybody. Let's let's fix that. Uh, that was truly irreplaceable. All right, let's find some flowers. Uh, I think over here we might have something. So uh, let's see what we can find. Now I found some more orange flowers. Uh, now these aren't necessarily the ones we need, but they can be potentially useful. But it occurs to me, I don't know if this break block uh, will necessarily harvest everything. So these uh, tall musk flowers normally are only harvestable shears. So let's see if they drop. They do not. Okay, so these do not count as shears. Um, but do they count? I don't know how much I want to risk it. I wonder if they count as tools for things that can only be picked up with tools. Well, let's keep going and see what we can find. Actually, let's see if we can shoot these. All right, that works for the uh, normal flowers. That's actually a good amount of fun. Um, all right. But still, no uh, special... Uh, I believe it was blue or brown flowers. So let's keep searching. Get more things we don't need. We might actually... We do have some bones. There is a way to basically make our own floral fertilizer, which uh, will generate random flowers, which might be quicker than actually finding these things we're looking for. There's some red. Hmm. Oh, that's a bit more powerful than I expected. Uh, but yes, let me search around a bit more, and uh, if I don't find them, we will try the fer floral fertilizer route, as we do actually have bones. <coughs> Thanks to the pirates, the endlessly generous pirates. All right, see you all soon. Oh, this is interesting. I mean, I'm seeing a pirate ship in the background. That might be useful. Uh, but this right here is, I think it's from the random things mod. Um... Yes, from random things. Nature core. Now, if I understand, this block isn't breakable. Uh, but if any saplings are placed on the ground nearby, uh, it will automatically plant them or something like that. Or maybe we'll just automatically sprout saplings. So let's take this sapling. Clear some room. And see what happens. If anything. It might need some time. Uh, but they also come with little chests here. A uh, little chess, magic beans. I think that opens up a beanstalk to the sky. I'm going to keep that in case we find a slime island. Potatoes, I can potentially go ahead and bake those. Uh, yeah, it's potentially useful stuff. Um, I wonder if this can actually store things. Oh, let's... No, it does not. Um, let's see if that got planted. No, it did not. Uh, maybe I just don't quite understand, but apparently that is itself special. Let's actually mark this location. Uh, so, journey map is what I've been mapping everything with so far. If you want to see the crazy long journey, I didn't show you guys all of this. But, crazy long journey of exploration... Uh, I think that was the first village right there. So, uh, yeah, this is how far we've traveled. Let's see. Uh, we're actually uh, actually not that far. It looks like about two kilometers away. But uh, with that, I believe if you press B, you can uh, make a little uh, bookmark of location. Uh, we're going to call this Nature Core. 
Right, should we want to do such things in the future? Use it as some kind of tree farm. All right, um, I think I'm going to leave the pirates in the background for right now. We will be able to attack them soon. And let's figure out what we need to do to uh, get some floral fertilizer already. All right, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is make some bone meal. Got uh, all the bones left over for pirates. That should make a decent amount of bone meal. Now, we're also going to need flower petals we don't need as much of so let's see got seven cyan and seven miscoid flowers let's just take half of that and half of that we're gonna make those into petals see each flower makes double the amount of petals uh, this is for the small flowers that is uh, then we are going to make a oh what is it called pestle pestle and mortar i think i'm horribly mispronouncing that but needs a little bowl, and uh, needs uh, planks and a stick. So let's see what we can do for that. Make our little bowl. And we already have a stick. There's a plank. And let's use that stick. All right, there we are. Now this can be used with the petals to make uh, powder. This powder can be used in place of other dyes in most recipes. Uh, so it's quite useful for that. And let me see the recipe for floral fertilizer. Okay, so it needs four powder and one bone meal. So we're going to be making not too many of these, but each one will give us more flowers. So. We should get a return on investment here. I'm actually going to go and I have a bunch of iron I smelted. Some of it uh, stayed iron. I'm going to make, I'm going to take a nap actually. But after that is done, I'm going to make uh, some shears. Wait, don't I already have shears? Where are my shears? This is odd. Already lost my first set of shears. Yeah, it happens. We use this on the ground like bone meal. And we get that was traditionally four flowers, but this time it is only three. Now one thing to do though oops, is use bone meal on each of the flowers to make them bigger. And then shears to cut them down. And then give four petals instead of uh two. For a second I thought that blue bookmark was uh and there's our blue flower. All right, I'm going to uh, go ahead and magic this up. Cut it down. And then get the rest of these up. Now, one thing you can do, we're going to uh, break this a little bit more uh, in a bit, is place down petals and then bone meal them and make them into double flowers, which you can then cut down for each. Basically, each bone meal application multiplies the amount of petals you have by four. But I think this is probably a good point to wrap up for now. And uh, next uh, episode, we can start on Botania and uh, get us a proper crafting table, finally. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed this, and it wasn't too much programming. But uh, we should get uh, moving around again more next time. All right, uh, bye for now.